Alrighty, so we're going to be doing a little bit of chemistry here. As you can see uh, from the question stated, or not really a question, but more of a demand, uh, I'm going to be explaining why the answers to the questions that was given to me uh, actually adheres to the question. So looking at the first one, the first uh, question, I don't want to keep repeating that word question. I've, I've been saying it a lot. Uh, it says, what is thermal chemistry? What is kinetic energy? And how does it actually relate to thermal chemistry? Okay, so thermal chemistry is simply the study of heat energy and how it behaves and how it moves. Heat energy gets absorbed into things and it gets transferred from things. Kinetic energy is simply energy that exists when something is moving. So if anything is moving, it has kinetic energy. And when it stops moving, it does not have kinetic energy anymore. It ceases to have that. And it may be confusing at first, wondering how that might relate to thermal chemistry, but it's actually really simple. In my answer, I actually say that kinetic energy relates to thermal chemistry because of the movement of the heat energy particles, which is true. So that's number one down. So looking at number two, it asks, how does thermal chemistry affect us? Well, it's pretty simple. Thermal chemistry, like I said, is the movement of heat particles and whatnot. So let's say that you're sitting at a campfire, you're going camping, and you're cold. So you set up a fire, and that's how you warm your hands, correct? That That's just thermal chemistry right there. That's an example of it right there. So what's happening is you set that fire, and then all the heat particles, well not all of it, but heat particles will start moving into your hand because your hand is colder than the fire. So your hand absorbs that, and the fire transfers that heat energy. And it's not just the fire, it's anything that's warm really. Anything that's warmer than you will get absorbed into you and that's exactly what i said in question two it answers that perfectly now when we look at the third question it's what is the difference between heat and temperature that might be a little confusing to some people i thought of it for a little bit and i i was like yeah there is a difference actually so temperature is how hot or cold something is it's like getting a bowl of cereal having the milk and the cereal uh together you would just call it cereal right but you wouldn't call milk cereal. It's a totally different thing. Same with heat and temperature. While heat is in temperature, it isn't temperature totally, just like the milk and the cereal, like I said. So the creation of the meal cereal is a combination. So as we said in our previous slide, heat is a form of energy. And heat, in the equation form, is represented by the letter Q. That's what this question is asking. What is heat? What is the symbol for heat? And what do scientists use, or what unit do scientists use to measure heat? Okay, I'm going to get to that last part real quick. So, heat is actually measured by a few things. Uh, I actually looked through this, and I found, at least the one that I remember the most clearest, is that heat is measured through something called calories. Okay, so a food calorie is totally different. This calorie in thermochemistry equals heat energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of H2O by one Celsius. That is what a calorie is. That's what one single calorie is. And I mentioned that in my slide, and I can't believe I just died 17 kills streak. <laughs> Dang it. Now in this next question, it's fairly simple. It's asking, how does heat move? Well, that's really easy. Heat will always move to a colder object. So like I mentioned with the whole fire thing, the heat from the fire moves to your hand because your hand is simply colder than the fire. And if you have a heater and you have ice cubes right next to it, the, the, uh, the heat energy from the heater will transfer to the ice cubes. And I did mention that in the slides, I made that clear, so I did answer that question quite well. Now, looking at our next question, we have what is exothermic reactions and what is endothermic reactions? This is pretty simple. In an, exothermis, eh. in an exothermic reaction, heat is released. And in an endothermic reaction, heat is absorbed that's pretty much it that's what i said in my slides gets the job done oh hey we won nice now let's look at the final question what is q equals mc uh change in t so q as we talked in a few slides above q is heat energy and m 
uh, this is the, uh, from for after Q, everything is new from here. So M equals mass of a substance, and C equals specific heat. Change in T, or triangle T, equals the change in temperature. And in the question, it also asks, how does Q change uh, when an endothermic versus an exothermic um, reaction happens? So in an exothermic reaction, when heat is released, Q becomes negative. So you can't actually have negative heat energy. That's just saying that heat is being expelled rather than ingested. And in an endothermic reaction, as you might have guessed, heat is positive. Now, that's actually all that I have for you today. Uh, I did answer the question. And, uh, well, that that's it. That's all. I'm just going to finish this game now and... Uh, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please, Mr. Rice, if you're up to this point, give me an A. <laughs> I would love that.